You'll find no mention of zero-point energy in classical mechanics. The closest thing you'll come to it in 19th century science is the concept of the ether, a hypothetical substance that pervades all of space, invented to explain how light waves could travel through a vacuum. The fact is that zero-point energy is a phenomenon exclusive to quantum mechanics, and in particular a governing rule of quantum mechanics known as the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. Zero-point energy is the lowest possible energy that a quantum system can have. Unlike in classical mechanics, quantum systems constantly fluctuate in their lowest energy state as described by the Uncertainty Principle. One way to think of zero-point energy is the kinetic energy or vibrational motion retained by atoms and molecules even at absolute zero, when according to classical physics all motion should cease. Alternatively, think of it as the energy left behind in a volume of space after all the matter and radiation has been removed. According to quantum field theory, the universe can be thought of not as isolated particles, but as continuous fluctuating fields. Matter fields, whose quanta are fermions, that is leptons and quarks, and force fields, whose quanta are bosons, such as photons and gluons. All these fields have zero-point energy. We also have some observational data on zero-point energy. The fields associated with it produce physical consequences that are measurable in the lab. One example is the so-called Lamb shift of the spectral lines of an atom. The fields slightly perturb an electron in an atom so that when it makes a transition from one state to another, it emits a photon whose frequency is shifted slightly from the normal value. Another measurable consequence of the fields associated with zero-point energy is the Casimir effect, a force that appears between two closely spaced metal plates. The Casimir force is due to radiation pressure from the zero-point energy of the background electromagnetic field. In effect, some wavelengths of the field are excluded from between the plates, thus reducing the energy density compared with that of empty space. The imbalance results in the plates being pushed together. Zero-point energy has been seen by some as representing a vast, unexploited potential. If zero-point energy could be tapped, it might be of future importance to space travel, a fact that hasn't gone unnoticed by the US Air Force. A request for proposals by the Air Force Rocket Propulsion Laboratory in 1986 read, Bold new non-conventional propulsion concepts are solicited. The specific areas in which AFRPL is interested include esoteric energy sources for propulsion, including the zero-point quantum dynamic energy of vacuum space. That all sounds very exciting, but there are still huge gaps in both our theoretical and observational knowledge of this subject. Some theorists, notably Richard Feynman and John Wheeler, have obtained extremely large values for the zero-point energy of the vacuum, leading to optimism that it could serve as an almost unlimited future source of energy. But the only direct observational evidence we have for it are very subtle effects such as those already mentioned, the Lamb shift and the Casimir effect. Until recently, cosmologists had no reason to think that zero-point energy played any significant role in the evolution of the universe as a whole. The only significant force at work appeared to be gravity. To explain why zero-point energy appeared to play no great role on a cosmic scale, some theorists propose that the fermion field has a negative zero-point energy, while the boson field has positive zero-point energy, so that these contributions cancel each other out. That would be true if supersymmetry were an exact symmetry of nature, but experiments like those at the Large Hadron Collider have so far found no evidence to support it. 
What's more, it's known that if supersymmetry is valid at all, it's at most a broken symmetry, only true at very high energies. No one has been able to show a theory where zero-point cancellations occur in the low-energy universe we see around us today. But then came a dramatic new development in 1998, with the startling discovery that not only is the universe expanding, but the rate of its expansion is increasing. Evidently, there's some other phenomenon at work in opposition to gravity that's causing the expansion of the universe to accelerate. That phenomenon has been named dark energy. We still don't know what it is, but among the various ideas put forward is that dark energy is none other than the energy inherent in empty space, zero-point energy.